Hey everyone, I finally got my uh, Kickstarter backer version of my OUYA just this week along with this extra controller. I was an early backer of the OUYA Kickstarter, mostly due to the fact that I have some Tegra 3 tablets without an HDMI output and some games on it that didn't quite work in that form factor and I kind of wish I could plug to the television and use a controller. Um, so the OUYA seemed fairly appealing in that case. Uh, the controllers even had a little touchpad if you needed to have touch controls. Um, Unfortunately, the OUYA doesn't come with the Google Marketplace, uh, that, and that's where I purchased most of my software. Um, it, they are pushing their own marketplace that has a free-to-play model. I'll go over that a bit later on. Uh, you can install the Google Marketplace, apparently, but you'll need to root the console and get your Google account information in it somehow. And I didn't opt for it because um, the OUYA is still doing fairly frequent firmware updates and I'd rather not have to reconfigure every time. Uh, instead, I've also got some software via Humble Bi Indie Bundle. Um, and you can easily install the Humble Bundle Android app and download and install all those uh, games uh, fairly easily. I'll go over that uh, just a little later, uh, but for now I'm just going to go over some of the standard control schemes for the OUYA console. Although not quite standardized across all apps, this is, seems to be the general functionality of the face buttons. Press O for OK Accept, A for Back Cancel, Y for Menu or Settings, U for Purchase. The System button, or Circle U, uh, can be used to activate the controller and pair with the console. It's occasionally used as a Start or Pause button, and if you're ever stuck in an app and you can't exit, uh, you press and hold the system button for a few seconds and you'll get back to the OUYA's main menu. The touchpad is not multi-touch capable, so it can't perform actions like pinch to zoom. You can, however, do the following. Drag your finger on the touchpad to move a pointer to the area you want to target. Tap the touchpad to simulate a tap on the touchscreen where you've moved the pointer. Try not to drag your finger during the tap, as it'll just read as a pointer move. To perform a drag operation, you need to tap followed by a drag. It's a bit finicky in timing, and you might need to start your drag in the same spot you tapped. It was a little tricky to film, so I don't have it quite right here. Alright, now let's finally plug this in and show you how to install third-party apps. A fairly quick and easy way to install third-party apps is via the web browser, here found under the Make menu. So select Make, and then Browser. Once the browser's up, you can press Y to get access to the URL, and it'll pop up an on-screen keyboard. Start typing. We're looking for the Humble Bundle Android app, so there it is. Uh, select that. Now find where the app is on the web page. And navigate a bit. Oh, there it is. Start the download. Um, I don't think you get notified when it's done, but it's a very small app, so you can just as easily... Uh, it should be done by now, actually. Let's push A repeatedly to get back up to the main menu. Uh, downloaded apps are found uh, in Manage, System, uh, Advanced, uh, then storage, uh, downloads, select the app you want to install. Uh, in this case I had previously installed it so it's asking me to replace it. Uh, once it's done installing, press the A button again to get all the way back up to the main menu. Uh, then your app should be found under the make section. That's where all the third-party apps are installed. Here we'll just launch it. Uh, next I'll go through all the apps I had installed from this Humble Bundle to see how well they fared on the system. 
Here's a quick rundown going from the least compatible to fully working Hummel Bundle games. Blade Slinger doesn't boot up at all and stays stuck in a boot loop. The room boots, but it's stuck in the title screen without a means to start a game. Cog starts up fine. Uh, you can play the first level, but the second level requires multi-touch, so you're stuck there. Sword and Sorcery get stuck at the first battle because you need an accelerometer or a means to rotate uh, the screen to enter fight mode. Plants vs. Zombies seems to work okay, but the display cuts off in the middle of the tutorial. Splice is playable for the first few stages if you can live with the finicky drag controls, but multi-touch appears to be required later on. Funky Smugglers seems to work okay, but it also relies on the drag function, which makes it quite difficult to play when you need some speed. Euphoria HD plays fine. Without multi-touch, you can't zoom out and you need to constantly use the annoying drag to navigate the play area and to move your seedlings around. Crayon Physics is playable, uh, but you need to draw using the drag function again, and that introduces quite a bit of difficulty. Zenbound seems to work fine. Uh, the Yuya simulates portrait mode well. You'll need to use the drag controls, but you can take your time here. Swords and Soldiers works fine without the need to drag, but you will be handicapped by the extra time it takes you to maneuver your pointer around for various actions. Waking Mars appears to work fine, but the touchpad makes it difficult to control your character's flight. It might not be possible to play if there's any tricky navigation required at the later stages. Contre Joule requires you to use the drag controls to manipulate the environment, which could get a little difficult in the later stages if speed is required. Cannabalt seems to install the free limited Ouya Marketplace version of the app in the play section. I don't know if this is something that will happen to any app that's also available on the Ouya Marketplace. Avedon the Black Fortress plays fine, but the graphics are so small you'll either need a large television or binoculars to play. Uh, it also relies on touchpad controls. Anomaly Korea seems to work okay. You play with the touchpad only and you'll need to use the finicky drag in order to navigate the map, but time appears to be frozen so you can take your time to navigate. The pace of the game also appears to be slow enough for you to perform most tasks uh, during active play using the pointer and the rest of the touchpad controls. Machinarium seems to be fairly playable. It's touchpad centric again, but it also seems to have a limited need for dragging in its control scheme. So far, all the dot .emu games seem to work the best. Metal Slug 3 works fine with a directional pad and buttons. The only issue is you can't seem to use the credits when you're at game over, so you can't continue the game. Ride-in Legacy also works fine. You'll just need to use the touchpad to navigate the menus and use maybe the finicky drag to switch between the different ride-in games. The gamepad and buttons can be used with or without the autofire enabled. Again, the main issue is to actually spend your credit in order to continue a game. Another World works great with the directional pad and buttons. And now on to the Ouya Marketplace itself. As I mentioned earlier, the Ouya experience is tied to its marketplace. In fact, when you first start up the console, one of the first things you have to do is register your marketplace account. You'll find the marketplace under the Discover menu. Ouya has a free-to-play model in its marketplace. In other words, you can download and play any title free of charge, give or take some limitations. So far I found the combination of beta versions, some with offers to purchase special access, limited time demos, limited plays per day, limited to only the tutorial or the first levels or the first campaign, fully playable game but with limited upgrade or equipment paths, free to play with the option to purchase in-game currency, equipment or upgrades, and apparent freeware. I'm all for allowing developers the flexibility to implement whatever free to play model they desire. However, most entries in the marketplace don't indicate what the limitations of the free app are, nor how much it would cost to upgrade the app. To find that information, you'll generally need to download the app and launch it. 
Even then, many apps won't tell you what the limitations are until you smack right into them. The purchase price is also generally not shown until you hit the purchase button and are asked to confirm. There should be some standardization to give the user this information before they download the app. Okay, well here's a montage of some of the different apps that I've downloaded from the UEM Marketplace.
tires. Speed up. It's time for what am I eating? Which food is not lying about?